Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Reset to Track, our F1 2020 My Team Career Mode here with Game on Australia recorded every week live at Tuesdays. Yes, we are going to begin, be beginning our F1 2020 playthrough uh, in just a moment here. As we see, we set up our team, our name is Game on Oz Lightspeed F1 and we are currently choosing our primary target sponsor and that will be Loop. You can see there we get some good bonuses. Uh, for five points finishes our engine supply for the season now having a little quick look at it There are some ups and downs at each but we're gonna go for Renault because they tend, tend to be pretty well mid-pack in terms of costs and other considerations in terms of our teammate uh, We are gonna go for Nick the freeze who is pretty much the best um, There he is the former F2 champion. So that gives us the ideal lineup to start up this week's race and here we go, ready for our interview okay. with Will Buxton. We're live in five, four, three. Hello folks, and welcome to the HQ of Formula One's newest team. We've been invited backstage to gain an exclusive insight into what could be one of the most exciting entries in the sport for many years. Now we've seen a number of new teams enter the sport over the last decade, amongst their number Manor, Caterham, HRT and of course Haas and while some have proved to be successful others have morphed into different teams and some have disappeared completely what marks this team out though as being something different is that its owner is also its driver now, there's a rich history of that in Formula One too Sir Jack Brabham John Surtees Graham Hill and Bruce McLaren all drove their own cars in the sport but it has become increasingly rare in recent years years. What's very special about this team though is that, that while the team itself is new to Formula One, so too is its driver and owner. Whatever happens this season, you've already made the history books. Tell me, do you feel up to the mammoth task of both managing and driving for a Formula One team? Yeah, look Will, this isn't just about me, this is about my team and I'm behind them 100%. Together we're unstoppable. Every team needs two drivers, but what was it that drew you to your teammates. Yeah, we've seen what they can do on paper and I see a lot of potential in them. So, yeah, one thing really quick. I love the fact that Will Buxton is in this game. No one aims to finish bottom of the table. Who's the team you're aiming to beat? Uh, Haas were looking strong last season. I think we've got the same magic in us. How are you expecting the car to feel out on track? Well, uh... Eh. Making the car as responsive as possible was one of our main goals. This is going to give us the edge going into corners. The other teams now have years of experience, both on and off the track. How are you planning to catch up to them? Hmm. Yeah, look, a, a fresh pair of eyes can find solutions other teams haven't seen, and we found some unique ways of reducing drag. Overtaking is a key part of this sport. How have you ensured that your car can take advantage of each opportunity that comes your way? Overtaking is all about power, so we've been working hard to get every bit of performance out of the power unit. And finally, which of your new departments are you most proud of? Yeah, our, our aerodynamic department is probably one of the best in the Formula One at this point. Well, uh, that's starting off, all we've got time or for has here. potential. We will see us. how this fledgling team fares in its first Grand Prix. Yeah, so okay, great, thank you. That's a wrap. Will Buxton's time in the game is well too short-lived, but uh, yeah, we're going to quickly go over our activity timeline for the first week before the first Grand Prix. We're going to focus on power and durability, power and durability. And uh, we're also going to work on training up our second driver a little bit. Now, this will increase our stats and uh, make them a better racer overall. We'll also be able to get some extra R&D points and uh, race the claim of our team using the uh, systems that we just put into place. Um, so we're going now to our characters real quick. And we're going to select our race suits. Um, now we have one that we've made up before. It is the wonderful black and purple race suit uh, to match the colors of Game On Oz, uh, or at least its primary colors. As you can see in our um, logo, we have the same white and purple to offset that. And I, I dare say that suit looks very nice. 
Uh, so we go ahead now and we look at our gloves. We're going to go back to our matching gloves. And one new thing they have this year, you can choose the character poses and the podium emotes, which is something that is brilliant, something that's been lacking for a long time. Uh, so that should spice up things a little bit in that arena. And now we can see our car for the first time. Uh, I've got to say, I love this livery. We kind of went for a similar vibe to Renault in terms of that black and yellow competitor, uh, but we went for a black and purple uh, to again match the colors of the game on Oz. Now we're going to quickly choose our development because we do start off with some nice points at the start. We're going to work on our rear wing main plane to increase the rear downforce of the car that should be ready for Vietnam. And we're also going to work on improving the fuel efficiency of our car overall. Um, fuel efficiency? No, we're going for our ERS, rather, uh, just so that we can get a nice little performance boost early on. And with that, we go into the first practice session here at Albert Park. It's a wonderful, clear, sunny day, uh, so we should get, get some good running in. Uh, we're not going to show you the entire practice session here. Uh, what I think is probably best to do is we're going to go out, do our track acclimatization program so we can get you a run through the track and... Uh, following that, we're going to pretty much go straight to qualifying. You found a lot of talented people for this team. I can't wait to see what we can accomplish. Our journey to the Constructors' Championship starts here today, and the car is ready to head out whenever you are. All right, so we're going to start up our track acclimatization program here on the hards. We're going to drive out uh, and just listen to this. Yeah, so right off the bat, you can tell the design design from F1 2019 to F1 2020 has been vastly improved, and it's simply magnificent compared to last year. Um, overall, it's a lot more crisp, a lot more pronounced, and a lot more realistic, if I dare say. So, as you can see here, we're just getting ready to go. Uh, we're finishing up our outlap, and we're just going to hit the curb a little bit, and that's... That's one of the troubles of the new handling model this year. It's it's a lot more slippery than it was uh, in 2019. It, it's just overall a little bit more unpredictable. Um, it has a lot more grip overall, but when you lose traction, it, it is very hard to maintain control of the car. So here we are. We are starting our track conversation program through the chicane of turn one. We're probably uh, just a little bit deep, but other than that, turn one, turn two, looking good. DRS open now as we come through the straight here into the right-hander, uh, into turn three. Got a nice good braking zone there, just missed the curb on the inside. Probably what you want to do. Uh, Left-hander for turn four, trying to avoid the outside curb as best you can. Maybe a little bit of a nudge flat through turn five, using a little bit of the outside curb to maintain your momentum there. You want to cut over the curbing here on the inside as much as you can without indulging the lap and take it out to the curbing on the outside through turn seven now. Uh, turn eight, we exit. Turn nine is a heavy braking zone into a tight right-hander into an opening up left-hander of turn 10. We go under the Aramco Bridge now as we get ready for the turn 11 and 12 chicane, a place where a lot of drivers will find their laps invalidated. Uh, we, you see we there, we just missed our braking zone a little bit and we ended up going a little bit deep. Uh, definitely was not ideal, but yeah, it's track colonization. Not, we don't have to get the lap perfect here. Um, so, through turn 13, turn 14 now, keeping it nice and tight into turn 15. Go a little bit deep here, or a little bit shallower, rather, and that'll bounce us out of the curb there. We lose a bit of time in turn 15. Turn 16, we maintain traction. DRS open, and that will be the conclusion of that lap there. Overall, a good run, but there are some places that can be improved. So now we're going to go straight into qualifying for the Formula 1 Rolex Australian Grand Prix. Now, of course, one thing to notice here is that because we have 22 cars on the grid, the cutoff is no longer the bottom five, the cutoff is now the bottom six. So that means that we need to finish P16 or above in order to make it to uh, Q2. So this is the best lap of our session for Q1. Uh, you can see us setting up there. Going on for mode 4-2 for hot lap and max engine mode. 
And across the line we go. Through turn one, we're going to get a good, nice little bit of curbing, a little bit deep. Actually, sorry. False alarm, that's going to be the lap that we've invalidated, of course. So we go ahead now for our best lap of the session. You see there, we're going to take a little bit of the curb on the exit of the final corner. We've got seven minutes left in the session, so we do have time for one more run if we need it. Uh, but this is our second set of soft, so we're going to come in a really nice line through there. Quick correction there as we get a little bit of oversteer from taking that curb. And we're going to run it down into turn three as fast as possible. Having the brakes, uh, take the inside as much as you can uh, without touching the curb. Avoiding the curb mostly on the outside, maybe running it a little bit, but it's uh, one of those points where it's very hard to um, hit it perfectly without spinning yourself a little bit. Taking a bit of the inside curb there, taking into the AstroTurf on the left side as well. We come through here now. Uh, we get ready for the braking zone. Heavy right-hander again, trying to use the curbing as much as you can on the left side to give yourself a nice straight run in the corner. And as we get ready for turn 11 and 12, nice good early turn in. Try and take as much of the curb as you can without actually hitting that bollard. And DRS open again. So far, so good. As we enter the final sector of the lap. Through the second to last, or third to last, now the penultimate corner. Left-hander, taking a little bit of the curb still. Probably a little bit less would be ideal, but that's going to give us a good run into the final corner. And across the line we come for what is a 21.5 and P12 overall. So a very good lap to start us off with there in Q1. And that should be enough to get us into Q2. And in fact, we hold on to P12. We were just behind the racing points, so that's definitely something we could have done. So now we're going for our best lap in Q2. Uh, we have just under a minute left. As you can see, we haven't had a very successful time so far. We're only managing Q16. So we're going for our second lap now in the session on slightly worn softs. It's going to be tricky to get out of here. As you can see, we go a little bit deeper already, just brushing the grass there. It's thankfully not an invalidation of the lap just yet as we continue down. Trying to get the purple car into Q3. It's looking a little bit tricky. Uh, not as much curbing there. You can see the lap so far in the first sector isn't shaping up exactly as well as the lap that we completed in Q2. Especially there, we didn't take as much of the curb. So we are now really just trying to limit uh, our damages. As qualifying is complete, uh, P15 ahead is Gasly. And as we look at the sector times here, Kip Kifiet's done a 48.9, we've done a 49.2, so we're only three tenths behind. We can try and close this one up a little bit. Overall, his lap so far is a 21.3, so as he comes into the last sector of corners now, hard right-hander, we're going to take the curbing, nice and smooth on the throttle, right again, right out on the curbing there. Trying to take the corner well here. We stay off the curb this time, gives it a little bit more traction out of the corner. Through the right hander now. And we come across the line for what will be a 22 flat. Not good enough to improve from P16, so that will be where we are starting for the race, unfortunately. Months of rumour and speculation all come to an end today as we return to Melbourne for the opening race of what promises to be an enthralling season. Welcome along then to the Australian Grand Prix.
The Melbourne circuit is certainly one that needs to be taken seriously. Its combination of slippery surfaces and difficult corners make it a tricky track when it comes to overtakes. Drivers find it hard to pass and will need to take full advantage of those DRS zones if they want to have any hope of breaking through. Can Mercedes start with victory in their bid to win a seventh consecutive constructors title? Could the run advantage early on? And with 22 cars on the grid, how quickly can the new team find their footing? Well, it's great to be back, Anthony Davidson. We've got a lot to talk about this year. That's right, Crofty. It felt like a long winter, but it's good to finally be back. I have to think the usual suspects were battled out at the front. But there are always going to be some teething problems early on in the season, so whoever can keep on top of their issues will have the advantage today. As I mentioned earlier, we're up to 11 teams this season, with a new entry run by, well of all things, an owner driver. That's something we haven't seen in this sport since Hector are back over four decades ago. So how are they looking so far? It's hard to imagine how a small operation like that could survive in the ruthless world of Formula One. And yet here they are, first ever race looking surprisingly strong. But there are no points for qualifying. Let's see how they fare in the Grand Prix proper. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Vettel, Max Verstappen and Albon, Sainz, Ricardo, Ocon and Lando Norris, Perez, Kvyat, Lance Stroll and Raikkonen, Gasly, Falcon, Antonio Giovinazzi and Roman Grosjean. Magnussen, De Vries, Russell, and Nicholas Latifi. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Okay, I know it's your home Grand Prix, but treat it like any other race. Don't take unnecessary risks. All right, so looking at our strategy for the race then, we are going to look at a two-stop strategy with the softs going to the mediums and softs. This should give us a chance in the middle of the race to try and conserve tires and have something a bit more punchier towards the end, uh, when most people will be going on the mediums or be on a longer stint of the softs. All right, so we're about to get on the way of the race as we're counting down to the lights, trying to get the revs properly matched. And his lights out on the way we go, a bad stuff from us, but we see everyone else bugging down around us. We're gonna get past Gasly here, looking for a move position, and Raikkonen moving right to the inside. Stroll is covering off. We're gonna go right out the inside, hold short of Norris just a little bit there. Stroll stays around the outside. We get the move done on Gasly and Raikkonen, however. We stay in front, and we might have an opportunity here as the AI tends to slow down quite a lot for the opening laps. And there we go for a double move on Norris. Norris is gonna close the door, though. We get pushed onto the grass. So that's going to be us relegated then to P13. Thankfully, no damage from that incident there. As we continue on our opening lap, we're looking at another opportunity here on Norris as we squish to the inside there. A lunge down the inside. Norris backs out, and that's us into P12. He's still fighting alongside, though. And it's going to come down to this corner here as to whether or not we can hold him off. And we get the braking done. We hold the inside line, park on the apex, and that is us into P12 there. Behind Ocon and P11, so a good start there. Up from P16 into P12, roughly about where we qualified in the first uh, qualifying session. And as we can continue on through our opening lap here, you can see already that the uh, Mercedes, Ferraris, and even the Red Bulls and uh, Perez, I believe that is, are starting to pull away already. So... Our goal here is really just going to be trying to stay with Ocon, keep Stroll and Norris behind as we're definitely punching them out of our weight right now, and really just try and maximize the potential of this opening first lap. As we come through the final corner now, um, we are just behind Ocon still with Lewis Hamilton sending a 30.2 as the fastest lap overall. See a gap already forming behind the Stroll and Norris as we fast forward now. We are still with Ocon on lap 5 as we go for the corner here. A little bit of a squeam there, and we lose traction again on that curb. That's going to give Stroll an opportunity here. We're going to overtake to try and hold him off, and it's just not going to be enough. Stroll goes around the outside, and he's going to just really break away already. Try to kind of get there. We've got to get our first track warning there for track limits. Overtake open, DRS open. We're not going to close Stroll back in. So that's going to be us stuck down in P13 now. Lost position. That's not the end of the race, though. This is the uh, phase of the race lap 17 when everyone has been pitting not too much has happened at this point but we have a Stappen now coming by as he is looking to make a pass on us to 
uh, get some clear air and make his undercut work on the leaders. So for Stapp and looking for something now, we're not going to open up Overtake until we know that he's not got it on and he doesn't. So we're opening it up just a little bit there to get us a nice little gap separation into the chicane at turn 11 and 12. And then Max Verstappen, we're going to let him by essentially as he's not going to be racing us. He's going to be racing well ahead uh, as we are a full pit stop behind now. So it's not going to be in our, um, our need to battle him as we enter the end of lap 18 here. We're going to go into our pit stall now for our pit Albon just behind. Taking the run nice and hard and braking. Getting down to a good 45 kilometers an hour. And we'll see what our pit uh, team can do for us on the first stop of this career mode. Will it be good? 1.9 seconds? 3 seconds? We don't know yet. So when we come for the mediums now, we're going for a soft, medium, soft strategy, remember, and 2.4 second stop here. It's going to be close to Gasly. Can we keep ahead of him? We get out. Norris has undercut us by a fair while, and Gasly, well, here he comes, and he gets past us quite easily there in the Alpha Tower. So really, we just did not have the pace to maintain um, our distance to these guys. We still have Raikkonen behind now. Remember, he was behind. We've got, our goal really here is going to be trying to hold him behind. Uh, as we're on different tires and a safety car. Now, this is not good news for us here. Safety car could be good as it gives us a chance to close up a bit more with our medium tires and cars ahead, but it also leaves us um, exposed to the cars behind. So we're at the end of the safety car period now. No one's really coming to the pits. Lap 24, getting ready. We're just warming the tires up a little bit there, weaving side to side, as you can see. And we're getting ready for the jump. Come through this corner here and. Well, okay, that's a bit unfortunate, isn't it? 10 second penalty for doing essentially nothing. Uh, GG Codemasters. Anyway, we continue forward, getting ready for the jump here on the lap back. Looking towards the outside of Gasly. You can see now that Hamilton's just about jumped. So we are now pushing forward. It's not a great start behind Gasly. We're going to fall back to about seven temps already off the restart. Raikkonen is about six tenths behind now, and he's going to be a real danger factor here with those soft tires behind. We're not going to be able to hold him off as best as we want to, especially if we had similar tires. So we're really going to have to push the, the walls off of this car here. Uh, we're going to have to try and close up the gas, so stay within DRS so that when it is activated, we can go ahead and get the most out of the car and tires as possible. We did get to save some fuel during that uh, safety car period, so that was a good bit of luck there. You can see there we've managed to do it. DRS will be enabled on this lap, and we are still within one second of Gasly. So no DRS until the far side of the lap here, but we are going to get a really good opportunity here as we get a good through turn one. And oh, just another half spin there. You can tell the handling model is really just not giving us any leeway here as Raikkonen now pulls up alongside. We're going to go too wide with the man in the softs in the Alfa Romeo racing car. As we go, we look to squeeze him a little bit on the apex to try and get him back off, and he doesn't, and that's just a half spin there. Oh, we've been spun by Raikkonen there. We get back on the track there. We're looking to uh, maintain position. Thankfully, we didn't get any damage from that. We got Russell now to deal with on the softs. As we try and maintain around the outside, he's going to run deep, and we get damage there from Russell. So no damage from the initial contact there. We get damage, though, from Russell, so we are going to be forced to pit again in this race, we let Latifi by as he's not going to be much of a factor now. There's no point slowing ourselves down even more in trying to get back to the pits here. As you can see, we're trying to deliberate what our strategy will be moving forward here. We're going to take our early stop now. Uh, hopefully the mediums will make it to the end of the race. So we are going to run on the medium tire. Come into the pits, get a front wing change and try and close the gap to those ahead of us once again. So here we are into the pits now. We'll see how long a wing replacement takes in our My Team career mode for GOA Lightspeed F1. And a 9.4 second stop, so exactly 7 seconds longer than our stop prior. So we come out a full 27, 28 seconds behind the cars ahead. Now we've, uh, in the next 5 or 6 laps, we've closed up to about uh, 10 seconds behind the freeze. We're taking as much curb as we can to try and get. And just another slip there! Just another slip, and that one's going to end our race. Let me know you're all right. So, you can see that we didn't really put a foot wrong. Uh, the car just gave out. So, as we go over the curb, uh, we don't touch the grass or anything. It's just a little bit of a of the bump in the change back. 
as just unsettles the rear and sees it slide out. We, we do manage to catch it and start correcting it, but in order to do that, we end up in the wall and it just does not work for us. So that is us retiring then from our first race here in Australia. Not what we want at all, but it's a 22 race season, so there is plenty of time to make points back. So, at the end of the race there, you can see Mercedes have managed to take the win. Um, I'm not sure what else we can really expect at this point. <laughs> um, be nice to get the uh, the patch for the uh, Black Lives Matter car and uh, uniforms in. That'd be uh, probably the right thing to do, considering that's the current livery and driver uniforms for the F1 cars. Daniel Kafiat taking out the last point scoring position then in the race, and you can see there, Hamilton first, Bottas in second, and Vettel in third, so Vettel in what will be his final season for Ferrari, doing a good job so far, uh, taking the first podium with a car that is not as deficient as it is in real life. So then that will conclude our episode for the first run of my team here in Australia. Next week, we will be going to Bahrain uh, for the final race there. Or for the second race there, sorry. Um, these will be streamed every week, Tuesdays, on the Game on Oz Twitch channel. So if you want to come be a part of the action as it happens, make sure that you come give us a follow. Come join the party. Feel really good. Real good. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 8 a.m. Australian Western Standard Time and 1 p.m. or 1 a.m. GMT. Well, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to uh, rate, comment, subscribe, do whatever you like. It's your choice. This has been the Butler signing off for Game on Oz here in our My Team Career Mode. Thank you so much for watching.